Well, good morning. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We've come to rejoice and to be glad in it. Praise the Lord. Uh, hello, my name is Pastor Ronnie Simmons, Pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, uh, one of the fastest growing churches in Smyrna, Tennessee. And I want to say welcome, welcome, welcome uh, to all of our Facebook family that have tuned in this morning. We want to thank you again for taking out of your busy schedule and to listen to the House of Faith weekly broadcast. Praise the Lord. So this is a good time uh, that you can go ahead and hit like and hit share, like and hit share. And still not too late, uh, you can even get on the phone, you can call or text or email some of your family members, friends, co-workers, and social media affiliates. Tell them House of Faith Christian Center is on the air. Praise the Lord. And uh, we're so excited about this day uh, that God has blessed us with. It's a beautiful day in Smyrna, Tennessee. And wherever uh, you're watching this broadcast, I'm sure uh, the weather is beautiful as well. And uh, again, I'm Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, pastor of House of Faith Christian Center uh, here in Smyrna, Tennessee. And uh, we are having uh, individuals look at this broadcast from all over literally the world. Uh, we come on every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we even have uh, friends there in Central Africa, in the Congo, and they come on at about uh, approximately about 4.30 in the afternoon as well. So we are just glad to have uh, you listening. This is your very first time tuning into our broadcast. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Listen, you are in for a blessed time as we get into the Word of God uh, today. So again, it's not too late uh, to go ahead and hit like and hit share. Hit like and share this. Praise the Lord. And uh, get on the phone and call all your family members and friends, uh, you know, social media affiliates, co-workers. Uh, just call anyone. You say you don't have any of those? Listen, call a few of your enemies. Tell them to turn to the broadcast because we believe that one word from God can change their lives forever in the name of Jesus. So who can you call? Listen, you can call mama them. You can call daddy them. You can call baby brother them. You can call baby sister them. You can call Pookie them. Call Shaquita them. Call, listen, all the M's and tell them that House of Faith Christian Center is on the air with the weekly broadcast. And we're so excited about this word of God. Oh my goodness, praise the Lord. It's going to be so awesome. And so again, any person that you know, listen, here it is now, all right? If there are 98.6 and breathing, all right, around 98.6 and breathing, listen, you get on the phone and you call them, praise the Lord, and uh, watch this broadcast, and uh, we'll uh, praise the Lord, hopefully we'll have this broadcast also uploaded uh, on YouTube and other media available as well, but you're on Facebook Live, and uh, again, Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, one of the fastest growing churches in Smyrna, Tennessee, a ministry that has a threefold vision. We believe in exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelize the sinners. We are ministry of fivefold purposes of evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. And I know many of you, uh, you're not able to go to your house of worship this morning uh, because of the social distance uh, uh, mandate has been implemented by our, our government officials. And uh, so you're, you're at home and uh, you're in the comfort of your home. But listen, I want to tell you, you're in the right place at the right time to get the right word of God. So if you have your Bibles, you want to go ahead and get your Bibles. Or if you have it on your phone, get your phone, iPod, uh, iPad, Iron, all right, uh, any type of device that you have, have the word of God. And it's going to be so awesome in the name of Jesus. So again, we do ask you to hit like and hit share, hit like and hit share. And again, contact people from all over. Uh, go through your contact list. Just tell them, say, hey, go to House House of Faith uh, Facebook 
and tune in and you can get this word of God. Praise the Lord. So uh, we thank you again for tuning in uh, this morning. And uh, we just believe that if you have an ear to hear what the spirit of God says to you, you listen, my friends, I'll guarantee after today, your life may never, ever, ever be the same. You say, why do you say that? Well, when you hear this word of God, you're going to see why I say that as well. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. In the name of of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So listen, let's go ahead and get our Bibles and we're going to go ahead and make our confession of faith, if you would. So if you would, go ahead and hold up your Bibles and say these familiar words. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. I'm now ready, 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 ready to receive the dynamic, the powerful, the ever-increasing, the life-changing word of God. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I boldly confess I'll never be the same. I boldly, boldly confess I'll never, never be the same. I boldly, boldly, boldly confess after hearing God's word today, I'll never, never, never be the same. For thine is the kingdom and mine is the kingdom. For thine is the power and mine is the power. For thine is the glory and mine is the glory. Forever and ever and ever. For this is my receiving day in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And again, go ahead and hit like and hit share. Again, my name is Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, uh, pastor of House of Faith Christian Center. Again, one of the first fastest growing churches in Smyrna, Tennessee. Well, I want to this morning, I just want to do just something a little, little different. Uh, praise the Lord. You know, sometimes we just get so stiff and uh, we get so stoic and uh, uh, we get so religious minded that many times uh, we forget that, that, you know, God is a God of life and uh, we are here to enjoy life. I'm going to talk a little bit about this morning. But uh, before we actually get into the word, I just want to share with you just a little uh, humorous story that I heard some time ago and and just kind of lighten the tone before we get into the Word of God. Uh, there was a pastor who uh, pastored the church. And uh, uh, one day he was in his office and he had a knock on the door. And uh, this lady came in and uh, she said, uh, could I see the pastor? And uh, the pastor said, I'm he. And he, he said, uh, how can I assist you? And she said, well, a uh, pastor, listen, I'm a widow and uh, I, I don't have a long time to live, and uh, I have uh, this dog of mine, it's just me and the dog, and um, uh, I just want to make sure, you know, that uh, this dog, when it dies, is going to heaven. And I want to see, if possible, if you could baptize my dog. And the pastor said, ma'am, that's a kind of strange request uh, that we, uh, Norman, we don't baptize dogs uh, here at the church. And uh, she said, well, Pastor, I, I really, really want uh, for you to baptize my, my dog. Uh, and again, I don't have long to live here, just me and the dog. And uh, it would mean a whole lot if you could bap baptize my dog. And uh, the pastor said, well, ma'am, uh, 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 thank you for considering us, but uh, I don't think I could do something like that that uh, to baptize a dog, it, it, you know, it could cause some kind of problems and, you know, people in the church would kind of talk and uh, we could get the health department down here, uh, you know, it could possibly give us a citation. So I, I, I don't know if I can just baptize your dog. And uh, the lady kind of put her head down to say, well, Pastor, uh, I'm sorry you said that because uh, I'm willing that whoever baptized my dog, I wanted to leave with them. Uh, in my will, uh, my estate, which is uh, worth over $500,000. The pastor says, ma'am, sure we can baptize that dog. You didn't tell me that dog wasn't a Baptist. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, uh, glory to God. But I just want to share that uh, with, with you in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Well, listen, uh, we're going to get right into the word of God. Praise the Lord. Well, if you didn't laugh, I thought it was funny. All right. Okay. This year, we've called this the year of God's grace of the plenty in 2020. Uh, it is a year of, of vision, clarity, and abundance. And the scripture that we've been using 
all year is Second Chronicles chapter 20 and verse 20. And it reads, so they rose early in the morning and went out into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, hear me, O Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. Believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Now, praise the Lord. Here is Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, who is, was in the midst of a national crisis. Listen, impending coming upon him was three of the most fiercest and ferocious enemies of the time. The Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Mennonites were coming to attack King Jehoshaphat, Judah, and all of Jerusalem. And the Bible says that Jehovah, Jehoshaphat, listen, he inquired of the Lord. He went to God and said, God, listen, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. And at that time, after that, the prophet Jehoshaphat came and spoke. And he told the, the people there in Jerusalem, he says, now listen now, first of all, you can't get into fear. Secondly, you have to realize that the battle that you have is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Third, you have to realize uh, that God is going to bring you through. You've got to realize, that, number four, that you have to get in your right position. And number five, listen, you're just going to have to stand still and see God move because God is with you. And then the Bible says after that, it says, Jehoshaphat, listen, get on his face before God and begin to worship God. And then the Levites began to praise God. So they had praise and worship service after they heard the word of God. And then your Bible says, then on the next day, listen, King Jehoshaphat, he gathered all the people together and he gave the, these inspirational words. He said, listen, believe in the Lord your God and you shall be established. What is the word established? It means you should be fixed. It means you should be built up. It means that you should be settled. You should be secured. You should be strengthened. Praise the Lord. But then he says also this now, and believe his prophets and you shall prosper. Now, again, this word prosper means to be blessed. It means to be uh, a well off. It means to be successful. Praise the Lord. So again, the key here in being blessed, in being prosperous, in being successful, in being well off, listen, in to believe the prophets of God. Who are prophets? Prophets are men and women of God who come to give you a word from God, who comes to give you the ways of God, and who comes to share with you the will of God. And we have stated that the greatest prophet, listen, the greatest prophet that has ever walked the face of this earth or ever will walk the face of this earth is nobody but the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the prophet of God. He calls himself prophets and other people call him a prophet of God. Praise the Lord. So we've been teaching on this subject, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your prophet. Why? For your prosperity. And today what I do, I want to add something to that is not only for your prosperity, but watch this, for your fullness of joy your fullness of joy. Now, before we talk a little bit about this fullness of joy, let's look again up at prosperity because again, people, when they think of prosperity, they only think about money. And I want to tell you, that's not incorrect. It's only incomplete. Prosperity means to be blessed, successful in every area of your life, in your spirit, uh, in your soul, in your body, in your relationships, in your business, on your job, in your marriage, and yes, even in your finances. But here's the thing right here, my friends. Before we can see the outward manifestation of prosperity, manifestation of prosperity, listen, it must first of all begin in your soul. So we're going to look at 3 John verse 2 again. 3 John verse 2, and I'm reading it from the Amplified Version. And in 3 John verse 2, it says this. It says, Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in every way and that your body may keep well, even as I know your soul keeps well and prospers. So notice, first of all, it is God's desire. Listen, my friend, that every person prospers. Every person is blessed. Every person is successful. Every person is, is well-rounded. 
But notice where it starts at. It has to start in your soul. Now, we, we talk about the soul. We talk about the mind. We talk about the emotion. And we talk about your will. Oh, I like to say it like this again. It is your thinker, your chooser, and your feeler. And so once it begins, listen, once it begins inside in your soul, in how you think, in your emotions, in your decisions, and when you begin to prosper and successful in that area, then watch this. It will start being made manifest in the outer. But notice, it starts by believing in Jesus as your Lord, your Savior, and your prophet, that he was the man sent from God who came to give us the message of God, who came to give us the ways of God, the word of God, and the will of God. And so when I believe in Jesus, my friends, then the Bible says I will prosper because he's a prophet of God. And so now I'll start prospering again in my soul. So we're teaching on this subject again, believing in the Lord Jesus Christ as your prophet for your prosperity, watch this, and for the fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Boy, I tell you, this word is going to be so good. So again, listen, you can just go and hit like and hit share and like and share because people need to hear this word about joy today. And we're going to talk about this. And some people say, well, pastor, how can you talk about joy? Do you understand uh, what's going around us today? Do you understand about the coronavirus and the pandemic? Do you understand about people are dying by the hundreds and the thousands each day? Do you understand that people being laid off and, and uh, they've been on furlough and they some have been terminated? Uh, they're in the unemployment line. Uh, we're seeing double-digit uh, unemployment. Uh, we're seeing uh, food lines, people lining up down the streets uh, just to get assistance. Uh, you see social distances where it seems like people uh, cannot leave their homes unless it's a necessary and emergency. And you're going to tell me that we ought to have this uh, uh, fullness of joy? Oh, yes, my friend. And when you see it today, praise the Lord, it's going to change everything of how you think about what's going on in the world, what's going on in your family, and especially what's going on in your life. So again, listen, get your Bibles, listen, get your notepads, get your highlights. It is going to be so awesome. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And see, listen, I, that's why I, one of the reasons I started by telling a little humorous story. Glory to God. That listen, you're going to find out that, listen, that God's will is for you to have joy in your life. But here's the thing about it, my friends. Joy is hooked up to your prosperity. Praise the Lord. So uh, let's get right into the word of God. And uh, it's so vital now that as believers, we uh, experience uh, this attitude uh, of joy. Now, you say, what is joy? Now, this is a definition I want to share with you what joy is. Joy can be defined as an intense feeling of cheerfulness, delight, pleasure, and gladness expressed in an outward exuberance. That's what it is. Glory to God. It's outward. It, 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 listen, it will be seen. It will be manifested. Praise the Lord. And now, so when we think about the word of joy, or sometimes the Bible says joyful, or sometimes uh, the Bible says rejoice. And I looked at this, and did you realize, my friend, from Genesis to Revelation, the word joy or joyful or rejoice is mentioned over 200 times in the Bible? Praise the Lord. Now, that's a lot. So that means evidently God has a lot to say about joy, about being joyful, and about being uh, uh, rejoicing in the Lord. Now, when we talk about joy, it is, it is often associated with a celebration, uh, and many times it is expressed through singing, uh, it is expressed uh, through music. And also in dancing, glory to God. And so, listen, 
Uh, when we when, listen, when we are celebrating, that's a time of joy. I've never been a, to a place of celebration where it wasn't joy there. And, and not only that, when you add singing and when you add dancing and when you, you add all of that, it's a time of joy. And I know, listen, many of you, uh, uh, maybe you're not able to go into your house of worship right now because of circumstances. But listen, when we go back, listen, I want you to be full joyful like you've never been before. We're going to come in and singing. You're going to come in and praising God. You're going to come in and clapping your hands. You're going to come in celebration because of this word joy. But let me stop right here. I want to tell you, my friends, you don't have to wait till you go to your worship service. <laughs> you Listen, you can start having joy in your own house. Glory to God. You can start celebrating. You can start singing. You can start praising. You can start dancing. Glory to God. Listen, you can have a good time. Why? Because of joy. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, what I want to do is I want to share with you four biblical facts about joy. Because I want you to keep in mind, my friend, I believe that if there's nobody on the face of this earth who ought to be experiencing and expressing joy, if nobody else, it ought to be Christians. Hallelujah. It, it ought to be people who are born again. And I know some of you are thinking, yeah, you can say that, Pastor, but you don't understand what's going on. Yeah, I understand clearly what's going on. But we're going to show you some things what the Word of God says. And listen, you, my friend, you got to make a decision. Are you going to listen to Jesus and the words of, of the Word of God, or are you going to be affected by people around you? And that's the issue. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's look at biblical facts uh, concerning uh, this outward expressions of joy. And remember, joy is linked to your prosperity. Praise the Lord. Could it be maybe you don't see the fullness of prosperity? It's because you don't know about this joy. You haven't been taught about this joy. Or listen, you just don't believe in joy. Praise the Lord. Well, my friends, if you don't believe in joy, you're going to have some problems when we share you today. Glory to God. So we're going to get right into it. So number one, watch this. We can only experience, watch this now, we can only experience real and genuine joy when we have Jesus Christ joy. Hallelujah. And it is to the full and it will remain. So your joy that you have is based on the foundation of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what did Jesus say about joy? Praise God. So our first scripture is, our second scripture is John chapter 15, verses 9 to verse 12. John chapter 15, verses 9 to verse 12. Now watch this. We're teaching on believing the Lord Jesus Christ as your prophet for your prosperity and experiencing this fullness of joy. Now remember, a prophet is a person who tells you, thus saith the Lord. And, and, and you got to decide, I'm going I'm to believe the prophet. Because if you believe the prophet and what he says, my friends, you will prosper. So what did Jesus say about this? Let's look at again, John chapter 15, verses 9 to verse 12. And I'm reading this from the uh, New Living Translation. It says, now this is Jesus talking uh, to his disciples, his followers, all right? And we're followers of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now, if you follow Jesus, could you just type in yes or type in why on that? Praise the Lord. If you follow Jesus, if you follow, if you follow of Jesus, if you're a disciple of Jesus, just type in why and put yes. Praise the Lord. And just say that's me, Pastor. I, I, that's me. I put yes, yes, yes. Glory to God. There you go. Go ahead. Go ahead and type in yes or put why. That's me. All right. So if that's you, then He's talking to you. Hallelujah. Now, if you're not following Jesus, we'll, 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 we'll take care of you at the end of service, all right? But praise the Lord. I'm talking to followers of Jesus or who want to be followers of Jesus. Now, watch what Jesus says. He says this. He says, I have loved you even as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love. Now, watch this now. When you obey me, you will remain in my love just as I obey my father and remain in his love. 
I have told you this. Why did you, why did you tell us all this, Jesus? He's going to tell you now. Watch this. I have told you this so that you will be filled with my joy. Yes, your joy will overflow. I command you to love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Glory to God. So here it is, my friends. Listen, we can experience this real unique joy, and it starts with one person, and that is in Jesus Christ. Now remember, don't, don't, don't get religious when I say Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. No, no. When I mention Jesus, five things come up. Number one, who he is, what he taught, what he commanded, what he did for you on the cross, and what he's doing for you now. So notice, that's believing in Jesus. Again, who he is, what he taught, what he commanded, what he did for you on the cross, and what he's doing for you now. So notice here, that joy, it has to start in that. And my friends, I'll guarantee you, if you don't put confidence in that right now, listen, that's the more reason why you don't have experienced joy. That's number one. Number two, watch this now. He says that this joy is based upon Jesus loving us. Oh, my goodness. He says, listen, just as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now, how did the Father, we know the Father loved Jesus. Now, watch this now. It's because Jesus obeyed the Father and he bared fruit for the Father. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How would you get this now? See, this is love. He, he says, the Father loved me, and so I have loved you. And because, he said, now watch this. I obeyed the Father. And because I obeyed the Father based on this love, I have a great joy within myself. Hallelujah. So Jesus, are you saying, listen, when we get a revelation of how much you love us, and then in a sense, we're willing to obey you, are you saying, Jesus, that we'll have this joy? Jesus says, yes, you'll have this joy. But watch this now. Not only will you have my joy working inside of you, but this joy, it will be full. Watch this. And it will begin to overflow. <laughs> Glory to God. Praise the Lord. So listen, my friend, if you're not experiencing this joy, then you need to find out. You need to go and say, Jesus, listen, show me how much you love me. Show me, listen, how, how you obey the Father. And so when you do that, Jesus, then listen, I'll start obeying you. And listen, I'll start following who you are, start following what you taught, what you commanded, what you did for me on the cross, and what you're doing for me now. Holy glory to God. Praise the Lord. So you got to define that, my friends, if you want that joy. You got to know who Jesus is. You've got to know that he is the perfect and sinless son of God. You've got to know what he commanded. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. I, I teach it. I come that you may have life, and I like to amplify this, that you may come and enjoy, enjoy life? My friend, how can you enjoy life if you don't have any joy? <laughs> Jesus, I want you to come that you may have and enjoy life. Watch this in abundance, to the full, and to the overflow. John chapter 10, verse 10 in the Amplified verse. So my friend, you won't enjoy life unless you get some joy. And remember, it starts with Jesus. And then you got to know what he did for you on the cross. What did he do for you on the cross? He died on the cross. He forgave you on the cross. He saved you on the cross. And he, listen, and he delivered you on the cross. And then you got to know what he's doing for you now. What he's doing for you now, right now, he's on the right hand of the Father making intercession for you. So that's how you have this joy. Now watch this now, but what's the other part of it? He says this, look, look, look at the last part of the verse, look at verse 12. He says, uh, I command you to love each other in the same way that I have loved you. Oh my goodness. So how did Jesus love us? He loved us, watch this now, 
by forgiving us of every sin. Glory to God. Listen, Jesus is not holding any grudges against us. Not one. All the things we've said, listen, all of our sins, listen, my friend, past tense, present tense, and future tense have been forgiven. He is not holding grudges. So guess what? He says, if you want to have this joy that I have, you can't go around and hold grudges against people. Oh, my goodness. Now, see, like I said, now, listen, don't, 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 you, don't, don't you hit that down because I'm going to show you how to have joy. You know, uh, there was a, 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 a good friend of mine I, I, I met uh, about 30 years ago. And uh, in all my years of ministry, I, I, I've ne never met a person like this. And uh, he, he was a preacher. And uh, I've been around preachers. Listen, my grandfather was a pastor. I have an uncle who was a pastor. Uh, cousins who was pastors. Family members, brothers and pastors. I had pastors and preachers all over. But I never met a person like this guy before. Listen, this guy... Listen, he was just full of joy. Every time I saw him, well, listen, when, when, when he preached, he was full of joy. But listen, it this it wasn't listen, it wasn't just at church. We'd be out somewhere. This guy was full of joy. I, listen, I don't care if it was at a wedding, he was full of joy. It, listen, at a funeral, this guy was full of joy. Listen, I remember a time a good friend of ours passed around. I passed past a few few years ago, and me and some other preachers, we were in the office and getting ready for the service, and you know, we we just you know we just didn't look like we should be looking. And listen, this brother came in, and listen, boy, I tell you, he got on us. He said, "What y'all looking so sad for?" He said, don't you realize this brother, praise the Lord, has lived a good life. He has fought the good fight of faith. He's done what God has told him to do. And now he's going to receive his, his just reward in heaven. Praise the Lord. And we ought to be shouting in this place that he's gone. Praise the Lord. He was just full of joy. I mean, everywhere he went, he was full of joy. Now watch this. I can never ever remember him talking about people in a negative type of way. Now he may observe some things and say some things, but as far as gossip, he didn't do that. And he, I'm gonna help somebody out now. He was always full of joy. Always. Listen, he forgave everybody. He didn't hold grudges against everyone, anyone. And he was just full of, full of joy. I remember one time uh, I was at the mall when the mall was open. And uh, I was there. And all of a sudden, I just saw these, these, these people start running, running to this place. And I'm like, you know, what's going on here? You know, there's a fire, whatever it is. And people start gathering what it is. And uh, I, I, I went to check it out. And here it is, my brother. Listen, he was in the middle of the department store, standing on a little table, telling people about Jesus. And folk was gathered, and they were just having a good time. He had so much joy because, again, he understood that he had to, watch this now, he had to love people the same way Jesus loved them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so he couldn't be around uh, 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 upset at people all the time and holding grudges and mad at folk and whatever it is because he didn't want, folk to, he didn't want people to steal his joy. Hallelujah. And I want to tell you, listen, the guy, he's prosperous. I mean, praise the Lord. God was just elevating him and still elevating him. He's pastoring, praise the Lord, uh, in, uh, in the church uh, uh, up in Watertown, Tennessee, doing an awesome work and growing more. Why? Because he always had joy. I would call him, praise the Lord, just full of joy. Now, let me give you another scripture. This is what Jesus says again. He says, this joy, watch this now. Let me go over again. This joy that he talked about, he says again, I have told you this so that you may be filled, watch this now, with my joy. Not just a little bit, but filled with my joy and that your, your joy will overflow. So when Jesus puts his joy inside of you, guess what? It will overflow and it will affect people around you. Hallelujah. But it's based on, listen now, it's based on getting a revelation of how much Jesus loved you. Praise the Lord. 
what he forgave you, how he delivered you, and now you go show that same love to people you come in contact with. Well, they did me wrong. Well, you did Jesus wrong, but he still forgave you. Well, they hurt me, but didn't you hurt Jesus? Hallelujah. So you got to decide, my friend, do you want to stay with that hurt or do you want to experience Jesus' joy? Glory to God. Now, let's give you another scripture. Look at Psalm 16 and verse 11. Psalms, see, I'm talking about believing the Lord Jesus Christ for your prosperity, which will lead to a filled life of joy or fullness of joy. Now watch this. In Psalm 16 and verse 11, Praise the Lord. This is what it says now. Oh, this is so good. It says, you will show me the path of life. Now, this, this is David writing, all right? David writing. He's talking to the Lord, about the Lord. He said, the Lord, you will show me the path of life, the God type of life. What is the God type of life that I ought to experience each and every day? Not just on Sunday. I'm talking about every day. Watch this now. He says, in your presence, oh, my goodness is fullness of joy. At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, I mentioned this to my, 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 my preacher friend. And so, like I said, I've never met a guy like this before. Always full of joy all the time. I mean, every just full of joy. And I just, I mean, I just asked, I said, man, I, I got to ask you this question. I said, how are you full of joy all the time? I said, don't you have problems and issues? He said, yes. I said, but you're full of joy all the time. You know, what is the secret? Because I want that, praise the Lord. You know, because I've been around people and look like they've been pruned on a pickle. Look like they've been baptized in lemon juice. I'm talking about Christians now. Look all broke down all the time, mad. Look red, fight for y'all. No joy whatsoever. And they follow Jesus. So I want to know what this guy said. Tell me, man, what's your secret? And in essence, he shared this with me. He said, Brother Ronnie, it's not a secret. Watch this now. It's a system. <laughs> he says, no secret. It's a system. I said, what's the system? He says, the system is staying in the presence of God. Huh? He said, yeah. He said, I, st listen, I spend most of my day in the presence of God. And, uh, and he showed me the scripture because he's biblical. Because, see, this is what the word says. He says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. Now, watch this now. He didn't say, don't get mad at me now when I say this. He didn't say, in the church, there's fullness of joy. He didn't say, in your religion, there's fullness of joy. He didn't say, in your denomination, that's fullness of joy. There's one place where you have fullness of joy, and the word says, in his presence. So he said this for the first time, never heard this. He says, every day I practice the I practice being in the presence of God. And, and I'm like, huh? He said, I practice being in his presence. Because when you practice, you get better at something. You don't get perfect, because practice don't leave you perfect. Or right? you're never perfect. But you get better and get better and better. So I said, well, tell me how, watch this now, how do you practice the presence of God? Because I want to know, see, because like I said, I've never seen a guy who had joy like this all the time. Praise the Lord. And give testimonies after testimonies about what God had come through, how he got in situations and God delivered him where it seemed that he didn't have money at times and, and, and God was miraculously, the money come up. I, listen, I want to tell you something. I've been knowing the guy. Now, listen, now, I've been knowing the guy for over 30 years. The guy's never been in the hospital. He's never been sick for a long period of time. And I'm sure he deal with a few little things, little aches and things like that. But I'm talking about, I've never seen it. Why? Because he taught me about being in the presence of God. He said, now, here it is now. I'm going to help someone. I'm going to talk to how you can have this joy every day. All right? In the midst of coronavirus, pandemic, in the midst of layoffs, in the midst of furloughs, listen, in the midst of all kind of stuff that's going around you, in the midst of shortage, in the midst of social distances, in the midst of, uh, uh, of being in a situation, 
I'm going to show you how you can have the presence of God so you can experience his joy every day. He said, Brother Ryan, here's a couple of things I do. He says, number one, he says, always give thanks unto God throughout the day. He said, God, I thank you. Then you start by, then I start thanking Jesus for what he did for me. I, I start saying, Jesus, listen, without you, where would I be? And he just started thanking. He said, I would start thanking God. I started thanking Jesus. I started uh, talking to the Holy Ghost that lives inside of me. He said, he said then I just start praising God in the midst of the situation. He says, and then I, I, I started telling God, you know, what you've done for me. He said, I had to remind myself throughout the day. He said, now, when I did this, watch this. When I did this, I stayed in the presence of God. And in turn, I got full of God's joy. He said, that's it. He said, there's no secret. He said, there's a system. Hallelujah. He said, I found, he said, the Lord, he caught me sometime when I started complaining. Uh-oh. Because he says, why complain when you can pray? Oh, glory to God. He said, so the Lord talked. He said, it wasn't an overnight thing, but gradually I just started doing that, practicing. He says, and in turn, I will get this joy over me. Praise the Lord. He said, and I'll be blessed. He said, sure. He said, I, I, I had situation. I had problems with whatever. He said, but here it is. Here's the joy. Now watch this now. Please, my friend, hear what I'm saying. The part of this joy, and I'm going to come back to it again, is knowing, watch this now, is knowing that no, what, no matter what I was in, God was going to bring me out. Woo! Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. No matter what I faced with. I knew that God was going to bring me out of that situation. So I had joy about it. See, the folk who complain and cry all the time, what they really do is they really don't know what God's going to bring them out of that. <laughs> but when you listen, when you know in your Noah that God's going to bring you out of every problem, that he's going to bring you out of this coronavirus situation, that he's going to bring you out of layoffs, he's going to bring you out of shortages, he's going to bring you out of social distances, he's going to bring you out of all this stuff. When you know God's going to bring you out, my friend, you got fullness of joy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Woo, my goodness. So he says what? He says, in your presence, there is fullness of joy. So my friends, as believers, we got to start practicing the fullness of, of the presence of God. And again, don't wait till Sunday morning before you start. Start doing it during the day. Listen, just start thanking the Lord. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I just praise you. Lord, I'm so grateful for you, what I have. Glory to God. See, stop complaining about what you don't have and start thanking God for what you do have. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, Guess what started happening? Now, now watch this now. now. Watch this now. He says, as your right hand, there are pleasures evermore. The right hand of God, Jesus, is always there. Check it out. Who's at the right hand of God? Jesus. He says, there are pleasures evermore. What's pleasure? Gratitude, cheerfulness, celebration in Jesus. Praise the Lord. So watch this now. Uh, I started hanging out with this guy as much as I could. And guess what? The joy that he had, you want to tell you what happened? It started rubbing off on me. And when I wasn't around him, listen, I, I would listen to his tapes. That's when we had tapes back then. And I, I would listen to his tapes. I would read his material. Praise the Lord. And again, this joy, what? I was practicing the presence of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so when people say, Pastor, why, why are you so happy all the time? I, I can't help it. It rubbed out for me. And I don't know if I could just do all that. Well, listen, if you're satisfied with being around sad, depressed looking folk, hearing sad, depressed news, going to sad and depressed places, reading sad and depressed materials all the time, is that what you want? Then my friend, that's what you're going to get. Praise the Lord. But you start being around some joyful people, people who are satisfied and happy in Jesus, who just love Jesus, and watch this, and start loving people the way Jesus loved them instead of loving folk the way you feel. Uh-oh. My friend, you have this joy in the name of Jesus. So that's, it starts with Jesus. Listen, I, I, can't, I can't 
Well, I want some deep revelation. I can't get into deeper than that, my friend. I want to tell you this joyful life is the best experience life that you can have, and you're not dictated by your circumstances. Now, let me give you uh, 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 the second fact of God and joy. Uh, we should be joyful in everything. Joyful in everything. Look in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. I'm talking about joyful. In, now, I didn't say joyful for everything, but joyful in everything. All right? So in uh, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 in the Amplified Version, this is what it says. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, glad, gladden yourselves in him. Again, I say rejoice. Hallelujah. He said, I say rejoice. Be cheerful. Be glad. Well, Pastor, how could Paul say something like that? I mean, you know, yeah, sure enough. He can say that. He, he's not experiencing what I'm experiencing. Listen, all this stuff that's going around here, and, you know, I got to sanitize everything, and I got to wear these masks, and I got to wear gloves, and uh, I can only go certain places. And, and uh, uh, yeah, Paul, he, he don't know anything what I'm experiencing. Listen, I got these kids around the house all the time, you know, and they fighting, fussing, and you know, hungry and, you know, you know, they, they like, you know, I like little crump snatchers uh, and, you know, little, little rug rats. They just, uh, my goodness. And I'm, I, it just, it just miserable. I'm trying to work from home. Can't get anything done. And Sir Paul, he can say that because he don't know what I am going through. Well, let's find out what was the conditions of Paul when he said, listen, when he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Delight, glad in yourselves in him. Again, I say rejoice. Oh, yeah, he was probably just sitting back, you know, on this lounge chair, and, you know, and eating shrimp and, and you know, and, and, and caviar and, you know, drinking, you know, his, his favorite beverage and, and having people take care of him. He can say that rejoice in the Lord. He's in. Well, my friend, let me tell you a little bit about when Paul wrote this, what his condition was. No, he was not in his lounge chair. No, he was not eating shrimp, steak, lobster, and caviar. He was not having people meet his every needs. When he wrote this, you know where he was? He was lonely, lonely and cold in a Roman jail cell. No family. No friends. Lonely. And he could say, rejoice. Huh? Yes. Check it out. He was a man that was, listen, being persecuted, was being in prison, and was being threatened by death. Everywhere he went, mobs were gathered to come against him. Family members didn't understand him. Friends didn't appreciate him. He had none of the luxuries that we experience today. And in the midst of all that, he was locked up and he could say, watch this. He could say what? He could say, rejoice in the Lord always again. So I want to share this with you, my friend. <laughs> today, yeah, you may, listen, you, you may can't go everywhere you want to go right now. And listen, you may be locked in. But listen, there's a difference between being locked in and being locked up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, you're locked in. You can't go anywhere. But you not have to be locked up, my friend. Praise the Lord. Listen, your mind can be free. Your spirit can be free. Your praise can be free. Your shopping can be free. Your glory to God can be free. Hallelujah. Your thanksgiving can be free. Yeah, you may be locked in, but you're not locked up, and you can rejoice in the Lord. So, Lord, I may not have everything, but I thank you for what I do have. I thank you that I have food on my table. I thank you that I have clothes to wear. I thank you that I have a car to drive. I thank you that I have a family. I have children. I thank you that I can work from home and still get paid. I thank you, Father God, for all that you've done for me. So, Lord, I rejoice in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Locked in, but you're not locked up. 
So watch this now. Watch, watch, watch this. Praise the Lord. Let me share this with you. This joy is not based on agreeable circumstances. Instead, listen, so your circumstance don't dictate to you your joy. Hallelujah. But, but, but I want to put everything together now. Watch this. But watch this. When you start loving people the way Jesus loved you, and you start forgiving people the way Jesus forgave you, and you stop holding grudges against people because Jesus don't hold any grudges against you, Jesus don't have attitudes against you, so you can't walk around with attitudes against people. When you do this, then Jesus says, my joy will be placed in you. Now, I want to tell you something, my friend. I want to tell you something. When you continue consistently have this joy, listen, your circumstances that you have, they listen, they are short-lived. Glory to God. Do you think God was going to leave you in that situation? All the time when you doing what he tells you to do and speaking to you and the Holy Ghost and praise the Lord is bringing things inside of you. No, listen, you're going to have a joy. Why? Because you have a joy of obeying Jesus. That's the key. Now, some of you folks, be, be honest. The reason why you have any joy because listen, you're not obeying Jesus. You, you just, just don't just repent. God, okay, I haven't been obeying you. And I'm going to start obeying you because I want this joy. Lord, tell you, go speak to somebody. I ain't speaking to them. Hmm. Lord, tell you, go help somebody. I ain't helping them. They better go find some help. Oh, and you wonder why you're miserable all the time. You wonder why you broke, busted, disgusted, and can't be trusted. You wonder why you can't get rid of that sickness in your body. Oh, you wonder that you have no joy. I want to tell you, my friend, listen, when you got the joy of the Lord, listen, that joy of any time, it'll get rid of all that stuff. <laughs> Some of you just need to have a good laugh at the Lord. You need to laugh at the devil, praise the Lord, because of what Jesus has done. And so your circumstances don't dictate you your joy. You have a heavenly father who loves you. You have a Jesus who loves you. You have a Holy Ghost who loves you. He has given you all things and praise the Lord for your blessing and for your life. And you mean to tell me you're going to walk around looking sad? And talk about uh, some coronavirus? Well, people are dying. All right? Okay? Paul says to be absent from the body, be present of the Lord. Praise that I hope they know Jesus. So they go be with Jesus. How, how, be, how best can it get? How better can it get? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. So you don't lose. You win all the time. Hallelujah. So, listen, uh, your relationship with your Heavenly Father, you got to have a relationship with Him, not a religion. A relationship with Father that He loves you. Praise the Lord. We love by Him. We have a good Father. That song says, you know, we have a good Father. And I love, we love by Him. He's, listen, He's perfect in all of His ways. <laughs> that will give you joy knowing that He's perfect. Now, we're not, but he is. So I have a relationship with the one who is perfect. Secondly, watch this now. We uh, know that he's with us. But listen, when I know God is with me, when I know Jesus is with me, when I know the Holy Ghost is with me, my friend, I'm going to rejoice all the time. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And then number three, again, the joy is knowing that God is bringing you out. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let me, listen, let me tell you about my friend that I mentioned to me. Listen, I mean, every time I see him, God is just taking him up, 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 up. Listen, he's traveling all over the world. Hallelujah. Telling people about Jesus, telling them about who he is, what he taught, what he commanded. What he did for us on the cross, what he's doing for us now. And, and Lord just has blessed him. Praise the Lord. Totally debt free. I'm talking about this now. I'm talking about a man. Totally debt free. Because of this joy he has of the Lord. Pray, always giving praise unto God. Loves his family. Loves his church. I mean, just seeing miraculous things just, just happening. Praise the Lord. And, and, and we've been placed together. Just seeing God have, and uh, have a good time. Listen, 
tell every he talked to everybody about Jesus. He don't preach. He just tell people what Jesus did for him. See, that's a start right there, my friend. You want to have some joy? You want to start telling people what Jesus has done for you in Jesus' name. All right. Well, let's go to number three. Number three. Uh, this joy, listen, will give us strength to abound in his grace. Look at Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 9 and verse 11. I'm talking about this joy because I'm going to show you again how the joy is related to your prosperity. See, that may be one of the reasons why you don't see prosperity moving in your life because you decided you won't be joy. You decided that you won't let the news dictate to you whether you have joy or not. And that's why if, pray, if it's doing that, cut it off. Yeah, I say cut it off. I'm going to tell you right now, there will be people, and listen, I'm, not, I'm being sensitive. There will be people who are going to die. People died before the coronavirus. People dying during the coronavirus. People will die after coronavirus. They are going to die. Listen, everybody wants to go to heaven, but the only way you'll go to heaven, my friend, you're going to die. So what we want to do is make prepare for ourselves for our new home. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So start telling people about Jesus as much as you can. All right? So uh, let's, let's, so, let's, let's, so don't let anything come and steal your joy. So in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 9 and verse 11, uh, I'm going to read this here. And this is from the New Living Translation. It says, Then Nehemiah the governor, Ezra the priest and the scribe, and the Levites who were interpreting for the people said to them, Don't weep on such a day as this. For Watch this now. For day is a sacred day before the Lord your God. And all the people have been weeping as they listened to the words of the law. And Nehemiah continued. And watch what he says. He says, go and celebrate with a feast of choice foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. For this is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected or sad. Why? For the joy of the Lord is your strength. Oh, my goodness. You listen, you want to have some strength. Listen, you start getting in the joy of the Lord. Start getting in the presence of God. Because remember, Psalm 16, verse 11, in your presence is fullness of joy. Well, I don't feel good. What does that have to do with it? Okay? You mean to tell me your feeling is going to keep you from thanking the Lord and giving praise unto God and start celebrating what God has done for your name? Praise the Lord. Listen, my friend, you may be watching this broadcast in the bed. I'm going to tell you right now, in the name of Jesus, if you just start lifting up your hands and start praising God and start thanking God and start saying, God, I just love you for who you are. Praise the Lord. I want to tell you that joy is going to come on you and you'll start having strength like you never had strength before. Hallelujah. Now, I don't think I can do that. Well, just stay in the bed and stay miserable all the time. And then you wonder why folk won't come see you. I wouldn't come see you any time. You complaining all the time. And when Jesus says, I want you to have my joy. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. If, listen, if you listen to this broadcast, if you're on Facebook right now, could you just type in joy? Praise the Lord. Just type in joy and say joy. Say it as many times you want to. Listen, it makes the devil mad. He doesn't want you to have this joy. He wants you to be weak. He wants to make things miserable for you. But listen, the joy of the Lord is your strength. You want some strength in your life, my friend? You start honoring God. You want some strength in your life? You just start talking about joy. Praise the Lord. Whether you feel like it or not. Whether you, listen, people, people, well, if I say that, people don't think I'm crazy. Well, listen, you know what? They think you're crazy already. <laughs> Listen, when you follow Jesus, folk will think that you're crazy. <laughs> so I'm going to have the joy. Praise the Lord. So he says, listen, you start honoring God. Now here's something also. This also you have joy. Watch this now. Not only when you honor God, but when you start giving to other people. Oh, my goodness. I want to tell you, my friend, there is a joy in giving to other people. And stop talking about that nobody gave me anything. Well, listen, my friend, if you want folks to give, you start giving things to others. You start sharing what God has blessed you with. Listen, you may not have much, but what you do, you can start sharing with other people. I want to tell you, there is a joy in giving. The scripture teaches, it says, it is more blessed to give than it is received. Why is that? Because with the giving comes joy. Hallelujah. 
So yeah, uh, listen, you can give uh, a finances, offerings, praise the Lord. But listen, you can give food to people. You can give time to people. You can give your smile to people. And I want to tell you, it's joy. Now, I, I want to go ahead and say this, and, and I'll share it again. I've said it on my Wednesday night uh, broadcast, and uh, I'm going to share for those who are watching my Facebook and all over the country, all over this world. Praise the Lord. Listen, I am thankful to God for he has blessed me for these 63 years that I have. Listen, I have a lovely wife. I have beautiful children. I have beautiful grandchildren. I have a loving church family. I have family. I have friends. Uh, I, listen, I am a blessed man. I am so thankful. But I want to tell you, the greatest joy I have, not as a pastor, not as a husband, not as a father, not as a preacher. The greatest joy I have, my friends, is that I received um, a message on my phone this past week. And it says, congratulations, Mr. Simmons. You have reached a milestone. You have given eight gallons of blood. And through those eight gallons, you have saved so many lives. My friend, listen. Wow. 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 That joy. I, I can't explain it. Because Jesus, 2,000 years ago, shed his blood for me. He gave his life for me so I could give my life for others. And knowing that I've given my blood for others is joy. My friends, these tears are not tears of sadness, and tears of joy. Because my life belongs to Jesus and giving to us is the greatest joy that you can experience. And this joy, it gives me strength every day To live for him. That's what he says. The joy of the Lord. It is your strength. And then. He says this. Oh my goodness. You have to hear the word. And understand it. And that's what the people did. They heard the word and they understood it. And it brought them so much joy. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so my friends, you've got to hear the word every day over and over and over again. And it'll bring you so much joy that he loved you. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Praise God. Well, listen, let me give you number four and close up and hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. I tell you, this is just awesome. So I'm talking about how you can overcome every situation. <laughs> so you, listen, you can laugh in the midst of stuff that's going around. When the devil tries to put fear in your life, shh, my goodness. <laughs> the joy of the Lord is so great. When he's trying to get you to worry about stuff, the joy of the Lord is so great. It will give you strength to overcome every situation. And you just start practicing his presence. So he says, in your presence, that's fullness of joy. But let me close off with number four, and this is it. 
I'm going to show you here, my friends, how we can affect, number one, our households, and then our church, and then our community, our city, even our nation, and yes, the world. I want you to turn to Acts chapter 8, verses 1 to verse 8. And here's the key. I'm going to show you now how you can have this joy. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. All right, praise. All right, all right. I'm getting myself together now. Praise the Lord. I, I tell you, I, I do have so much joy. Praise the Lord of the gift. Ooh. All right, okay, all right. Acts chapter 8, verse 1 to verse 8, New Living Translation. All right. This is what it says. It says, a great wave of persecution began that day. This is to the church now, sweeping over the church in Jerusalem, and all the believers except apostles fled into Judea and Samaria. Some godly men came and buried Stephen with loud weeping. Saul was going everywhere to devastate the church. Now, this is Paul before, uh, before he was converted. He was Saul, all right? Before the Lord changed him, he was Saul. He was going everywhere to devastate the church. Listen, he went from house to house, dragging out both men and women to throw them into jail. But the believers who fled Jerusalem went everywhere preaching, watch this, preaching the good news about Jesus. What did they do? Preaching. Everywhere they went, they were preaching this good news. What was this good news? It was a message of grace. Because grace is good news. They weren't preaching, condemning people, telling people you're going to hell. No, they told them about, you know what? We've got some good news about Jesus, who, who he is, what he taught, what he commanded, what he did for you on the cross, and what he's doing now. And that was the message they preached. That's all they had. Now watch this. It says, Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. Woo, watch this. Crowds, I'm talking about crowds. Crowds listened intently to what he had to say. Why? Because of the miracles he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And many, watch this, who had been paralyzed or lame were healed. So what happens when the gospel is preached of grace? What happens when miracles are being performed? What happens when ministry is taking place? When you go, you lay hands on the sick and they cover. When you pray for people, when you, listen, when you speak the word of God to people, when the miracles take place, what happens? This is what your Bible says now. Your Bible says in verse 8, so there was great joy in that city. Glory to God. The whole city got joy. Why? Because people, watch this now, were doing what Jesus told them to do. He told them to preach the gospel. It's a gospel of grace. It's a gospel of forgiveness. It's a gospel of deliverance. It's a gospel of breakthrough. It's a gospel of grace. It's this, this gospel. Praise the Lord. That glory to God. That God is not mad at people. Praise the Lord. It is almost so good to be true that God will not hold my sins against me, that he will forgive me. They preached that gospel and watch this. It was evidence with signs and wonders, praise the Lord, miracles, things started happening in the city. Glory to God. Miracles, praise the Lord. And I want to tell you, my friend, listen, there's miracles that's, that, listen, that, that's happening today. Hallelujah. Let me just give my testimony. We're going to close out. Praise the Lord. Uh, the first year I went to my doctor and I got my, my physical, my, my checkup that you had. Uh, to do that, and uh, they they put this they put this uh, stethoscope. I guess they have it here, and you know they listen to your parts, your back, you know behind you, you know on your back of your your your, your lungs and everything. And the lady listened to it, and she said, uh, "Hmm." She said, "Let me listen to it again." And she listened to it again. She said, "I'm I'm hearing something that's 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 unusual going on." And uh, I'm going to send you to get an x-ray to get checked out because there's something going on that I'm, I'm not used to hearing. And so she sent me to this place and 
I went and got an x-ray, came back, and uh, and she got the results, and she's like, hmm. So she called in the doctor, because she was the uh, nurse practitioner, she called in the doctor, and showed results, and the doctor kind of explained, said, said, now you you got something kind of unusual going on that uh, we, we can't explain, so we need to get some more tests run on you. And we're going to send you to uh, two two places to get, get checked out. And uh, one place I went to, and I had to do these breathing techniques and everything and, uh, as well. And uh, and and so uh, then I went to a place and got this uh, a CAT scan. I think they call it a CAT scan. They put it here. And so the lady, she said, uh, the nurse, doctor said, are you okay? I said, yeah, I feel okay. She said, are you, uh, you, 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 you sure you're all right? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I, I've got results back. And they, they found something on you that had, she said, now it's not life-threatening, anything like that, what it is. But she said, all my years of practicing, I've never seen anything that severe. And she said, you sure you're okay? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I, I, said, I, 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 I walk about a mile and a half every, every morning. She said, you do? I said, yes, ma'am. I said, I walk, you know, about a mile and a half every, every morning, you know. Now, you, 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 don't, you don't get tired? Walk? I said, no, ma'am. She said, I, ain't, I haven't even seen anything like that before. She said, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to monitor this on you. Because she said, it's amazing that you're doing, you, you're doing all of this and what we found. And she said, I haven't seen anything severe such what I see on your body. And I said, okay, ma'am. And so, yeah. So she sent me in. She said, I'm not going to give me any in prescription, anything like that. She said, I'll give you something to breathe. You have problems with breathing. Take that that you have. And, and she gave me one, and she gave me other things. She said, others you need. And I said, okay, ma'am. Did it. And so uh, 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 I just I just kept on walking. And uh, the Lord says, increase your walking. I want you to walk longer. Now, she said that this is the worst thing she's ever seen in breathing that she had. And the Lord says, increase your walk. So I increased it. And watch this. I did that, went a little farther. And then the Lord says, not only do I want you to increase your walking, but I want you to carry weights with you when you walk. <laughs> five pound, I think that's five pound weights. I want you to carry two five pound weights when you walk. Now, you're going to, not only you go walk farther, but I want you to increase your pace. And I want you to carry weights when you walk. <laughs> I said, okay, Lord. So I started doing it. So she called me. She checked on me. She said, Mr. Simmons? Yeah. She said, this is Dr. So and so. I said, yeah. I, she said, how are you feeling? I said, I feel great. She said, you don't feel weak or tired? No. I said, it, it, in fact, doctor, to be very honest, I said, I've increased my distance in walking. And not only that, I'm now walking with 10 pounds weights over two miles of walking. She said, what? I said, yes. Yeah. She said, what? She said, Mr. I'll be honest. She said, in all my years of practice, I've never seen anything like this. And you tell me you, you're not? I said, no, ma'am, I'm just fine. See, what was happening, my friend? <laughs> God had to convince her that he's still working miracles. He is still working miracles. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I want to tell you, we serve a miracle work God. So listen, God wants to work miracles. He wants you to continue on believing him. He wants you to continue in having joy and unspeakable and full of glory in your life. And listen, when you have that, praise the Lord, and people start hearing about your testimony and seeing that God is bringing you through, and they want to hear about your complaining, they want to hear about your, how bad things are, they want to hear about what they've already heard on the 6 o'clock news or the 10 o'clock news or the unemployment or, 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 or the food. Listen, people don't want to hear that. They want to hear about what God is doing. They want to get a revelation of redemption of God. They want to see that God is still working, that God is still healing, that God is still delivering, that God is still prospering, that God is still raising people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Out of their stupor. He's raising folk up. He's doing great things. Praise the Lord. People are still getting saved. People are still getting healed. They're still getting delivered. They're still getting set free. Listen, there are people who are in addiction. Praise the Lord. It's putting up their addiction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They realize that, yeah, I'm made me locked in, but I'm not locked up. Hallelujah! 
And what that happens when the church gets on fire with the joy of the Lord, praise the Lord, joy be in the city. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Woo! My goodness. Praise the Lord. I tell you, God is good. I went from crying to shopping. Hallelujah. <laughs> the joy of the Lord. You have to believe in the Lord Jesus as your prophet for your prosperity. And you will have this fullness of joy, my friend. I can't explain. I can't explain all of it. But just say, Lord, I just practice your presence. I want to give you thanksgiving in every situation. Every time I can think about giving and watch God start raising you up, going from increase to increase to increase. I want to tell you, praise the Lord. I mean, I'm just, this, I'm in just joining the joy of the Lord. I enjoy the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I've been around my house. Praise. Glory to God. Listen, my wife and I, we, listen, we listen, we watching movies together. How? Huh? Praise the Lord. Don't have to go to the movie theater and, 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 and get people walking all over you and, and listen, eating stale popcorn. And you don't spend about $30. Listen, we just sit and watch a movie yesterday. Had a good time. Popping some popcorn. Praise the Lord. Eat candy. You had something to drink. And just had a good time. You can enjoy that. Family members. Joy. See, this is what we're going to experience. We petition ourselves that we're going to experience joy in this life. Hallelujah. Well, listen, let's go ahead and take these confessions. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord. These are four confessions I want to share with you concerning biblical joy. Again, how you believe the Lord Jesus Christ as your prophet for your prosperity and the filling or the fulfilling and the fullness of joy. Number one, say this, I confess that I can only have a real and genuine joy when I have Jesus Christ's joy. Who he is, what he said, what he commanded, what he did for us on the cross, and what he's doing for us now. It is to the full, it is consistent, and it remains in me. Number two, say this, I confess that I will be joyful in everything because it is based upon my relationship with my heavenly father. I know he is with me and he is bringing me out. Number three, say this, I confess that the joy of the Lord will give me strength to abound in his grace. I will honor God Give to others and hear and understand God's word. Number four, say this. I confess that this joy is released in my city when the message of grace is proclaimed. Miracles are seen and ministry is manifested. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So let me, let me just pray this prayer over you right now. Glory to God. This, this, this prayer of joy, I want you, glory to God. See, some of you are going to have a joy party. Praise the Lord. You're going to have a joy party all by yourself. Listen, you're going to put some music on. You're going to do some singing. You're going to be some dancing. The Bible says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Glory to God. Un see, unto the Lord. So let me just pray this prayer for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you have given us an attitude of real, genuine, and complete joy of Jesus. This joy is unique and will remain in us because it is based upon Jesus' love for us. I thank you that this joy is based upon our relationship with you. And we know, Lord, that you're always with us. Thank you for giving us this joy, which will give us strength to abound in your grace. Jesus, Father, we will continue to honor you. We will continue to give to others, and we will hear and understand your words. This joy is released when the message of grace is proclaimed. Miracles are seen and ministry is manifested. 
as I realize, I understand that you have given us a grace of the plenty in 2020. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Now listen, my friend, if you listen to this broadcast right here through Facebook Live or later maybe through YouTube, and you realize that listen, there's something missing in your life, Listen, I, I, I didn't say you're a bad person. Whatever you're facing with today, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you may have an addiction. You may not. You may look good, smell good, drive good, eat good, but you realize that there's something missing in your life, and it's the joy of Jesus. And my friends, you can never experience true, real, genuine joy until it's based on who Jesus is, what he taught, what he commanded, what he did for you on the cross, and what he's did, doing for you now. But first of all, it's taking a decision that you accept this Jesus, that you make him Lord and Savior of your life, and he will be your property. He'll give you a word of God, a word from God, the, the ways of God, and the will of God for your life. And so if you never pray this prayer, we're going to lead you in a prayer that you can pray right now. And, and just bow your heads and let it come from the heart. And I want to tell you, it's going to be a joy that's going to overflow inside of you. And tears, if tears come, I want to tell you, they will not be tears of sadness. They'll be tears of joy. Listen, I cried, but I only brought because I cried like a baby. But it was not tears of sadness. It was tears of joy. Why? Because of Jesus. And you can experience it today. So would you bow your heads and pray this prayer for me? Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending Jesus in my life. I admit that I'm a sinner. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I confess him as my Lord. Father, I want this joy in my life. But I know it can only come through Jesus. So I receive Jesus right now in my life. Thank you for forgiving me of all of my sins. Past tense, present tense, and future tense. And when I die, I know I'll go to heaven because of Jesus. I am now saved. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. My friend, if you just prayed that prayer, I want to be the first one to congratulate you and say thank you again for being obedient. Remember, when you are obedient unto Jesus, his joy will overflood you and you will be able to share that joy with others as well. So you made the most important decision by receiving Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, there is another step that you need to go. And it is, you know what? You need to be learned, you need to be trained concerned about the things of God and how to love on Jesus and how to walk in the ways Jesus has. And listen, you can't do it by yourself. You need some help. And God has set it up for you to receive help through the local church. And if you don't have a local church family, I want to go ahead and recommend one of the fastest growing churches in Smyrna, Tennessee, House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. And you can reach us at this phone number. You've got a pencil and a piece of paper. Write this phone number down. Uh, the phone number is area code 615-619-394. Excuse me. 615-223-0420. 615-223-0420. If you live out of state and uh, you don't have a local church family, just give us a call and we'll do what we can to hook you up with a Bible-believing, uh, word-based, uh, Holy Ghost-filled church that will teach you and grow. But if you live in the Nashville, Middle Tennessee area, uh, we would love to have you be a member of House of Faith Christian Center. Praise the Lord. Again, that number is 615-223-0420. Praise God. So I want to thank you again uh, for your obedience. And I want to tell you, my friends, this joy that you have. Now listen, the world didn't give it to you and the world cannot take it away in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, we just had an awesome uh, word this morning that uh, God spoke to us concerning joy and, and we praise the Lord. We're now going to enter into our period of our offertory period and uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, and listen, I still have joy because I mentioned it's a joy giving. It's a joy of sharing with others what God has blessed you with. And so, again, we want you to participate in our offerings. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And uh, we have uh, three ways in which you can be a blessing. The House of Faith Christian Center. 
Praise the Lord. The first way that you can give uh, through text that you have, you can, if you have it down, you have the uh, app on your phone, go ahead and uh, pull it up and go to church services and find House of Faith. And then you can go ahead and give uh, through on your app that you have, and it'd be a great appreciated. The second way that you can give is online giving. Praise the Lord. And uh, listen, I've been using this and it has been so awesome. Uh, praise the Lord. If you don't have checks and, and you don't want to put it in the mail, then uh, you can do online giving. You just go to House of Faith Christian Center, our webpage that we have. And this is our webpage. It is House of Faith, www.houseoffaithchristiancenter.org. House of Faith Christian Center.org. And then you're going to find where it says donate and uh, online giving. And then you can give. And it'll be great to appreciate it. again. House of Faith, see, uh, House of Faith Christian Center.org. And again, online giving, donate and give that. And I want to tell you all your gifts you have uh, are safe, they're secure. Uh, we will never share your information with any third party or whatsoever. And so all gifts that you give are greatly appreciated. I have tax deductible. And we thank you for the upbuilding of God's kingdom on earth. Praise the Lord. So thank you to giving. Remember, there is joy in giving. You want some joy? You just start giving. Praise the Lord. As, as the uh, people just sing the song back in, he says, you cannot be God giving no matter how you try. Praise the Lord. But I want to tell you, the joy of the Lord will come upon you when you are sharing in Jesus' name. And then the third way that you want to give, if you like to give through the mail, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, you can give either through check or money order, and you can send it to House of Faith Christian Center or HOFCC, House of Faith Christian Center, or H HOFCC, our post office box is post office box 985, post office box 985, and that's Smyrna, S-M-Y-R-N-A, Tennessee, 37167. Praise the Lord. Now, I want to tell you, you do not have to be a member to give the House of Faith Christian Center. And listen, no, no gift is too big and it's too small to give. And we just believe that the offering that leaves your hand, that leaves your bank account, listen, my friend, it will never leave the earth. You're sowing good seed on good ground, and we appreciate you giving. Praise the Lord. So again, we just thank each one of you. And I want to go ahead and just pray a blessing and offering upon you, upon your offering. Father, we just want to thank you again. For those who've heard my voice, Father God, in this broadcast, I thank you, Father God, as they be able to give, as you have blessed them. That Father God, we thank you for what you've done for us. And we know, Father God, that there is a joy in giving. And we pray, Father God, hallelujah, that their vats will overflow, will overflow with increase, Father God, and they will experience the joy of the Lord. We thank you, Father God, for miracles. We thank you, Father God, for supernatural increase, supernatural money, checks in the mail. We thank you, Father God, for uh, increase. Thank you, Father God, for promotions. Thank you even in the midst of what's going on today. Thank you, Father God, for businesses being established, Father God. Thank you that it will run over and it will be a blessing, Father. And we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. So again, uh, you can go ahead and give as God has blessed you in the name of Jesus. You say, well, Pastor, do I have to give today? Well, no, you can just give throughout the week, uh, especially during online giving. Just go right to the webpage and uh, House of Faith Christian Center uh, dot org and hit donate and then give. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, uh, again, I want to remind each one of you that every Wednesday night that we do have our hour power call. It comes on from 6.30 uh, at 6.30 p.m. to about 7.30 uh, p.m. And we just have a wonderful time. We take the word of God and we dissect it. And we get more and more into the things of God. And so uh, we praise the Lord. Uh, you say, well, what if I have some questions uh, concerning about the messages? Well, there's two ways that you can communicate with us. Uh, you can go to our House of Faith line, again, which is 615 Two two three zero four two zero, and you can submit your questions, or you can go online to our webpage, and then we have an email address there where you can go and uh, get email and emails, any questions or comments uh, that you may have concerning the Word of God. But we do want to invite you to listen on Wednesday night, six thirty p.m. Central Standard Time, seven thirty p.m. Eastern Standard Time, four thirty p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Uh, and about 1.30 uh, p.m. there for the, our brothers and sisters over in the Congo that we have. Well, listen, we have a lot of things that are going on. We praise God. Uh, this coming Saturday, we'll be having our corporate prayer. And again, we'll be doing that uh, through teleconferences 
And uh, so we'll be sending information out concerning about the numbers that you can call and get in contact with us and we'll come to get a quote because do you realize that Saturday, excuse me, Friday will be the 1st of May? Oh my goodness, I tell you, time is moving on, but truly we believe that this year is God's grace of the plenty. In 2020, it is a year of vision, clarity, and abundance in the name of of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Well, listen, we have had an awesome time. The word of God has truly been blessed. And again, we just pray the blessings of God uh, be upon you. Uh, again, we tell you like you've heard, stay safe, uh, uh, stay strong, and stay at home as much as you can. Praise the Lord. Again, stay safe, stay strong, and stay at home as much as you can. And again, we appreciate all, uh, especially our medical staff and people who are putting their lives on the line uh, to benefit us. And we're thankful for each one of you as, as God has truly blessed us. And remember, praise the Lord, that listen, you can have joy in the midst of whatever we're facing because the joy of the Lord is your strength. So again, this is Pastor Ronnie D. Simmons, pastor of House of Faith Christian Center, one of the fastest growing churches in Smyrna T. Smyrna, Tennessee, with a threefold vision of exalting the Savior, equipping the saints, and evangelizing the sinner. We have five purposes again of evangelism, worship, fellowship, discipleship, and ministry. Well, thank you again for your time. My time is up. Remember Jesus is Lord and continue to show compassion in your actions. We'll see you all next time. God bless you.